Okay, hi there and welcome to a macro video this time looking at some of the causes and effects of shifts in aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Now, changes in both these two, AD and AS, can have an important impact on the general price level and also the pace of growth of real national output, GDP. A few important exam hints before we go through some examples. When you're drawing these diagrams, absolutely critical to label the axes accurately. There's general price level on the y-axis and real GDP on the x-axis. Label the AD and S curves. Indicate the equilibrium price uh, on the y-axis and so the level of GDP y on the x-axis. And very importantly, carefully label any shifts in AD and S and associated new equilibrium points. Attention to detail can make a big difference to your analysis marks. Also make your diagrams nice and big, at least a third, perhaps a half a side of A4 for each diagram. Equilibrium GDP happens when planned aggregate demand equals supply. What matters is that planned demand for goods and services, C plus I plus G plus X minus M, is close to the actual level of production from both domestic and external sources. So let's take a look at some common examples of changes in aggregate demand and supply and then trace how this affects equilibrium, real GDP and also the general price level. Here's our first example, a fall in business confidence. This might be due, for example, to a deterioration in sales expectations and revenues and profits, either in the home market or perhaps in export sectors. A good example at the moment could be delays to investment caused by Brexit uncertainty or by the lingering effects of the of the United States Chinese trade war. Well, weaker demand can then cause firms to scale back on their planned capital investment in new factories and new technologies. That fall in investment will then trigger an inward shift of aggregate demand. The result tends to be other factors remaining the same, a contraction of aggregate supply, movement movement down the aggregate supply curve fall in the equilibrium level of real GDP and also downward pressure on the price level. As AD1 shifts to AD2 here, there's downward pressure on inflation and uh, the risk that a fall in investment could perhaps trigger a recession. So that's how you could show that. Second example might be uh, a fall in the world price of copper. Now, copper is used as an essential key input in many uh, production processes. It's used in nearly every building project. It's used in making fridge freezers and washing machines. It's also used increasingly in renewables. A wind turbine typically uses more than three tonnes of, of copper. So if the fall, uh, if global copper prices go down, that reduces the costs for many UK firms. Typically, we rely on imported copper coming into the economy. A fall in costs causes an outward shift of aggregate supply because this is going to affect many firms, not just the building sector. Many, many businesses will be impacted by this. Aggregate supply shifts out. That leads to downward pressure on prices and an expansion of real GDP. What I've shown here is that an outward shift from AS1 to AS2 taking us down to a higher level of output uh, and lower prices. Now, you could develop the analysis a little bit don't forget that we import most of the copper that we consume, that we use. So if the price of copper goes down, then it may be the case, depending on the elasticity of demand, that we actually spend less on copper. Import The value of imported copper goes down. And of course, the demand equation is AD equals C plus I plus G plus X minus M. So if M is falling effectively aggregate demand would increase because there's a reduction in a leakage from the circular flow. So you might want to develop your analysis a little bit to take into account the trade balance effect of a fall in the price of copper. Third example uh, today is a fiscal stimulus. Fiscal stimulus is when the government of a country decides to use fiscal policy, changes in government spending and tax, deliberately to increase one or more of the components of aggregate demand. They might cut income tax, they might cut VAT, they might increase their own spending on public services and increase their fiscal or federal deficit. The main aim of a fiscal stimulus typically is to cause an outward shift of demand, to expand output, and a preemptive fiscal stimulus might be brought in when, 
when there are fears of recession and also when monetary policy is perceived to be ineffective when interest rates, low interest rates aren't increasing demand. Germany at the moment is thinking about a fiscal stimulus package, including more generous subsidies for electric cars, subsidies for climate friendly real estate renovations, investment in new rail infrastructure. All of these things, in theory, offer the prospect of a fiscal stimulus. If the stimulus is effective, all you have to do is show an outward shift of aggregate demand, causing a stimulus to aggregate supply. Again, the evaluation, of course, is to challenge and question whether this will work or not. But our video in this session is purely saying, well, how do we use the diagram to get good marks for showing it? And that's all you have to do. Uh, let's look at a fourth example, maybe one more, an increase in wage costs. So let's assume that hourly wage costs increase, perhaps caused by an increase in the minimum wage, and also a working assumption that there's no commensurate improvement in productivity. So wages go up, but output per worker pretty much flatlines. Well, that's going to cause an inward shift of aggregate supply because unit labour costs will have increased, causing a contraction down the aggregate demand curve and a rise in uh, the general price level. If, again, if you want to develop the analysis, you might think about the impact of a higher minimum wage on aggregate demand. Typically, families on relatively low incomes, uh, they tend to have a high propensity to consume. So if a minimum wage goes up or if there's a boost to their disposable incomes, they typically spend a high percentage of it and that could add to aggregate demand. So what I've shown in the diagram here is the fall in supply due to higher wage costs for businesses. AS1 to AS2, but I've also hinted that there might be an increase in aggregate demand caused by an increase in disposable income for people in relatively low paid jobs. So the net effect on real GDP is, uh, well, it's open to question, depends which of these curves are shifted and how far. Uh, both effects will probably cause an increase in cost push and demand pull inflationary pressure. So we've been through four examples of possible shifts in supply and demand at a macroeconomic level. As always on the Tutor's Do site, loads, loads of content updated and things, lots of provision help for exams. Uh, one area that's particularly useful, I think, is our collections page, which has whole collections of fantastic videos and other resources and quizzes. So do head there if you want to have a look. But thank you for joining in this video.